So, you know, in algebra, what we're constantly going to be doing is trying to manipulate numbers in order to solve things. We'll be given questions, we'll be given conundrums, we'll be given puzzles, and we'll have to resolve them. And that will always be a process of using arithmetic and maybe some clever ideas. So I wanted to sort of quickly go through some of the basic sort of arithmetical steps that we will be using constantly as sort of ongoing recurring themes throughout all that we're going to do together. Let me begin with just a very, very simple example to sort of get us back in the spirit of things. Suppose that I have something like 7 times 3 plus 2. Now remember, if there's no sign given in between two numbers like this, or two quantities, that means that it's understood that it's multiplication. So, so multiplication is sort of the, the naked operation. If there's nothing there, you're thinking multiplication. And if there's something there, then you're thinking well, whatever the something says. Now, in this case, what would this equal? Well, what I'm going to do is actually focus myself on these parentheses and compute that thing in there. Because those parentheses are saying, do me first. Do me first. So if I do that first, what I see is 7 times 5. And that equals, well, I can do that. That's 35. Great. OK, so what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that sometimes in life, we're not going to actually want to compute this, this number this way. So let me show you a different way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it is to first consider this multiplication, the naked, the naked sign right here. Now, if that 7 is going to multiply this entire quantity, then I have to make sure that 7 hits every single person that's over here. So what I have to actually do is make sure that I have 7 hitting that 3 and then 7 hitting that 2. And so what I'm seeing actually is the following. 7 times 3, sometimes I use a dot for times by the way. See, you see why by the way? If I didn't, it, would, it could look like you know, 7 naked 3 or it could look like 73. Well, so mathematicians went crazy for about 100 years before they said, why don't we just put a dot there? And they said, oh, OK, that takes care of that problem. <laughs> So anyway, plus, and then I have to take 7 and multiply it by the 2. You see, I've got to take 7 and multiply it by everybody. Now, what happens when I do that? When I do that, this gives me what? Well, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 14. And voila, this still gives me 35. So of course, we get the same answer if we're doing it correctly. But this illustrates an important property of the numbers. And this important property is called the distributive law. The distributive law, where if you have something multiplying a quantity, where inside that quantity you have things that are being added or things that are being subtracted, then if you want to distribute that outside thing, you want to make sure it hits every single person. And we will use this time and time and time again and time again. So this is a real big one. This is a real big one. OK, great, great, great. So that's sort of fun one. Let me do another example just to illustrate the distributive law to you and try to make it a little bit more abstract. So how about 5 times? 3a plus 4b. Now, when we see a's and b's and x's and y's and z's and w's, and if you're really, really fancy, maybe you see an alpha or a beta or something like that, you know what? Don't even panic for a second. Don't even think about it. All that I want you to do is to realize that that's representing some number, and I just haven't told you what it is. So you can think of it as 4. You can think about it as negative 3. I don't care. But just think about it as a number. And if you do that, you can't go wrong. For example, here, if you use the convention I just said, this is 3 naked a. That means 3 times a. So whatever a is, I'm multiplying it by 3. That's all this means. Now, to use the distributive law, I can take the 5, you see, and multiply it by this term and multiply it by that term. So I have to make sure it hits every term that's being added or subtracted. In this case, there's two terms, and they're being added together. So when I do that, what do I see? Well, I see 5 times 3a. So that's 15a plus 5 times 4b, which is 20b. So do you see how I took the 5 and multiplied it by this term and then added it to 5 multiplied by that term? Now, these can't be combined at all because, of course, we don't know that a and b are the same. They might be different. So in fact, all I can do is just write that. So there's the distributive law in action. Now, there's some other fun things I wanted to share with you. For example, there's always something great that mathematicians love to do. When you don't know what to do in life, you know what you should do? Do nothing. And in fact, we're going to be doing nothing a lot in this course. In fact, most of this course is, in fact, doing nothing. And that is really at the heart of algebra. Well, that didn't come out too well. But anyway, the point is doing nothing is a very valuable, very valuable and important idea. And let me show you how you can do nothing. Suppose I have an equation. Uh, for example, uh, x equals 3. 
One way I can do nothing is to add zero to both sides. You see, if I add zero to both sides, adding zero does nothing. I haven't done anything. So in fact, one way of doing nothing is to take a number and just add zero. That's because zero is the, here's the technical word, the additive identity. It's the number that when you add it to anything else, you just stay the anything else. So that's doing nothing. Now you can do this with respect to multiplication. If you do it with respect to multiplication, what do you think you do? You multiply by some number that's not going to change the value. That's the number one. And so you have, for example, seven times one, and that equals seven. So doing nothing is something that's going to be very important to us. And you'll see why when we're trying to actually solve equations. We'll want to do nothing all over the place. And you'll see that in action.